Yo, what up guys? It's RJ with Roads Liberty. Wanted to do a video real quick talking about uh, the situation in Milwaukee. I just watched a press conference with the uh, police chief there, David Clark, and uh, I thought it was pretty honest, pretty bold, pretty courageous. Um, basically, for those who don't know, um, an armed suspect got uh, shot fatally by um, police over in Milwaukee. Apparently, the person that got shot was holding a weapon. I believe it was an automatic or semi-automatic weapon. Um, I'll just say this. I think it's common knowledge that if you brandish a weapon in, in the presence of a police officer, but especially, like, not on a holster, like, if you, if, you, if you brandish a weapon, draw a weapon in the direction of an officer, it's a death wish. I mean, anybody in the world has to have common sense to know that if you point a, a gun at a cop, you're, you have a death wish. And... and when, you're, when your job involves responding to crime, responding to criminals, and you're, you're coming upon a situation that you, that you don't know what it's going to entail, and you see a weapon, a deadly weapon pointed your way, and you have a deadly weapon, now it becomes self-defense automatically. So, I mean, that's, that's the jump-off point there. And I think that it's, what blows my mind and what boggles my mind is the fact that all the rioting and looting and outrage that takes place within these uh, inner city urban communities stems from the belief that, that this use of police forces is, is wrong. And as David Clark, the police chief or sheriff um, over in Milwaukee, uh, had said quite, um, quite concisely and eloquently, the fact that there's underlying tension in these urban communities due to the poverty, um, the uh, broken family structures and other things, drug use, this, that, and the third, um, gangs. But the fact that people get, these people are getting immediately upset over the fact that somebody was shot and killed by a police officer. Meanwhile, there are certain circumstances where it is acceptable for a police officer to shoot and kill somebody. Um, it's been in movies, it's, it's been in popular culture since my whole life, and I'm in my 30s. Um, this isn't a new thing, that if, if cops are chasing a robber or chasing a, a child molester or a murderer or something, and they're on the run or they're evading or they're threatening police officers, if they have a bomb strapped to the chest, there's a very good chance they're going to be shot fatally and killed. It's, in movies, it's been in movies in the 90s, 80s. This is not a new thing. Um, so what, what initially blows my mind and what I find very upsetting is the notion that every police-involved fatal shooting is causing these riots and these outra this out outrage when it obviously has to be the case that some, some of these are going to be understandable and justified. Um, and then, you know, David Clark was reading the, the list of offenses that this uh, suspect had committed, crimes committed, sentences, um, felonies, dismissed felonies, um, violence, drug dealing, um, probation violation, uh, breaking and entering. So, I mean, if you're, and I know that 99.9% .9 of the time, no, no one who's involved in these rioting or looting or anything like that is going to end up seeing a video like this. But if you were a person who rioted and looted and set cars on fire and stuff in Milwaukee, or you ever partake, partook in anything like this in any other uh, situation before the facts are out as to what actually happened or whether the person who was cu killed was threatening the life of the, of the police officer... It's, it's reckless and it's immature. I mean, you, you're, you're, you're ruining other people's property. I mean, if, if you're, it, it's the biggest contradiction you could think of. If you're from an inner city and you feel disenfranchised and you're mad at whatever it is, the dominant class, the white people, or however you perceive things, police officers, whatever, and you're saying, it's no fair. They have things that we don't, or I want um, someone to help me or whatever. I need resources. You're saying, I need resources. So the way to express that you need resources or you want help 
is to destroy other people's things. Who's going to give somebody resources when that's how you treat resources? You see something and you go, oh, I'm going to destroy this because it suits me. It's a threat. You show that you're a kind of person that's willing to engage in violent threats. No one's going to want to help you. No, you're only going to create more enemies. I mean, I know that I don't have that kind of element in my audience of this channel, but I do get over 90%, well, over 80%, sometimes over 90% of my audience is non-subscribed viewers. So any, any given view on my video could be someone who um, is hearing this sort of a message for the first time. I'm, I'm more than willing to debate. I'm more than willing to engage with whatever ideas are out there. I feel for any individual who is impoverished, who's discriminated against, who's mistreated, or what have you, I don't in any way, shape, or form think that the solution is going to be to threaten other people and to try to extract resources from other people, especially not the same group that you say that you hate. If, if they're, and I'm not saying this is true of all or even necessarily most or even any kind of, sub, I don't know what percentages relate to this, but for anyone who feels that they're part of a disenfranchised group and that there's a specific group um, that, that is responsible for that, and then you want that group to be the one to help you and to bail you out and to give you resources. What's the fair amount? What's the end in that? If you, if you, if you have $20,000 of debt and, and $100 to your name, another person has $200,000 of assets in their bank, which they worked and saved and, and made responsible choices for, how much of their money do you think you should be able to take and... Uh, you know, 50-50, just, oh, you know, they worked their whole life, they saved money, they made responsible choices, I committed a bunch of crimes, I spent all my money on gambling and, and drugs and alcohol, but I deserve half of what they have. No, no one's going to say that. Well, someone might say that, but it's ridiculous. But even if you say I deserve a quarter or 20%, why? Why can't you go get a job? Why can't you go do something positive, productive in your life? I mean, I'm making this video, I almost didn't make this video. I'm making this video because I realize I don't have a ton extra to say. I'm just going to add my kind of two cents and put it in my own words. But the thing I can say is the fact that I don't like the way things are going. And I feel like just because I'm white and I have a mixed uh, ethnic background, ethnic meaning like ethnicities. So it's almost an offense to just call me white. Just like if I were half Puerto Rican, half African, half or, you know, third Puerto Rican, third African, and third uh, Jamaican, I would take offense to, uh, to someone just saying I'm black. It's like, no, I'm three things or whatever. I'm ten things. I'm five things, whatever. So my concern is because I'm white or I appear white, that um, at some point it's going to come to a head where, you know, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just concerned and worried and afraid, I guess, that people are going to start to fester in this hatred of different groups I don't hate black people. I don't hate any kind of group at all. Um, I have disagreements with specific individuals or specific ideas or policies, but I don't hate any group. There's no group I hate because they're this group. Um, I'm friendly to everybody who's I've never met and who's friendly to me. If someone's rude or offensive or violent to me, it's a different story. But um, you know, I, I'm concerned about this country, and I see these... Um, these riots as terrorism. That's what it is. Um, and Molly pointed that out on his video recently that, you know, if you're using the threat of violence to achieve a political or social goal, you're being a terrorist. So um, I, I, um, I applaud David Clark, this guy who uh, is the sheriff over there in Milwaukee, the police chief, for speaking up talking about the real problems at hand, and um, I, uh, I'm hopeful, I'm optimistic that something will change and get better. Thanks for watching, guys. Feedback, comments below. Literally, peace.